Hi and welcome to a new video here on my channel. Before we get to today's video, I first would like to ask you to follow me on Instagram. So on Wednesday this week, I'm actually flying out to Taipei, Taiwan for Computex. And Computex for me personally is the most important exhibition of the year. And I think we will see some new hardware, some hopefully interesting stuff. And I will try to do some video content for YouTube for you guys. I will maybe try to do some live content as well for YouTube. Not sure if I will have the time for it, but I will take a lot of pictures and like Instagram stories for sure. So just make sure you follow me in, on Instagram not to miss all this content. Because personally, I will also show something very new and also very exciting from my side on Computex. I cannot tell you yet what it's going to be, but as I said before, Make sure follow me on Instagram and then you will not miss it. So let's get back to today's topic and today we will take the deleting game to the next and probably the most extreme level I think I can imagine. In my hand I have an i9-7920X which is the cheapest of the most expensive CPUs. So it's the cheapest high core count CPU which I bought for this video. So thanks to my Patreon supporters um, for the opportunity to make this possible because in today's video we will do die lapping. So we will actually grind down the die from this side and see if this can give us some temperature improvements. I actually did this before and there are also other overclockers, especially extreme overclockers who tried this before, but not exactly the way we are going to try it in today's video. So sometimes when we do extreme overclocking, we have the phenomenon we call cracking. So basically we have the chip, we have the thermal paste sitting on top and then we have the IHS on top. And all of those three, they have different thermal expansion rates. So you have to imagine that when we cool down the CPU by 200 degrees Celsius, everything is shrinking and the thermal paste by far is shrinking the most because it's like a polymer compound, usually consists of silicone and the silicone has the highest or lowest, well, the highest uh, thermal expansion, so it's also shrinking the most when we, when, you, uh, when we cool it down. And when we apply a sudden load to the CPU, like running Cinebench suddenly at very high voltages, so you can imagine that we have a power consumption maybe of like 600, 700, 800 watt on those chips, and that's also uh, the heat load, obviously. So then the silicon is expanding, the thermal paste is expanding, and then we sometimes lose surface contact between the die and the thermal paste or between the thermal paste and the IHS, and that's what we call cracking. So to reduce cracking, we tried a lot of different things, and one of the things we tried was making the surface a little bit rougher um, with some kind of sandpaper, and uh, we tried if that helps, but typically it didn't really help, but that's one thing we tried before. Um, when it comes to like die lapping or grinding down the die. You guys probably know my Skylake X direct die frame, which is a tool I developed so you can mount those CPUs without heat spreader on your normal motherboards. You would have direct contact between your cooler and the die to reduce temperatures under load especially. So when I developed the Skylake X direct die frame, I also noticed that the chips are a little bit bent or uneven. And to show you how uneven the CPU is, I actually did measurements of the die, which you can see here. So in the center of the die, actually those measurements um, are measuring the total height of the CPU from the bottom. So on the bottom we have SMD caps and I measured between the SMD caps and the die. So die center and the corners. And the measurement in the corner is, uh, for example, 3.697, 3.674, 3.68, 3.692 millimeter and in the center we have a height of 3.714 millimeters. So we have typically a difference between like 30 or 40 micrometers in height between the center and the corner of the die, which doesn't sound that much, but considering how hard silicon is and how easy it actually cracks, it's still kind of surprising that we have this kind of height difference um, between the center and the corners. So obviously before we do any kind of modifications to the CPU, we do our baseline testing. So my setup is the Rampage 6 Apex motherboard with G-Skill Trident C RGB memory. And um, everything is cooled by an EK uh, Waterblocks custom loop. So I have only a 240 radiator, which is not that much, but it's still fine because it's an open test loop. So ventilation uh, through the radiator is really good. Uh, pump is an EKDC um, pump. 
and everything is cool by an EK Supremacy Evo. So I overclocked the CPU to 4.2 GHz on all cores and I was running Pri Prime 95 uh, 26.6 which is the non-AVX version for one hour using a 128K FFT length which is causing the CPU to be really really hot. So if you use like high um, high length FFTs for example 4096 or something like that you will have less power consumption. That's why I typically use 128k FFT length. So the CPU has been deleted before, so that's what I did obviously before we did everything here. The first step was deleting CPU, swapping the stock compound with liquid metal, but I didn't check temperatures of that because we've seen a lot of content on deleting already. So as I said before, CPU was pushed to 4.2 GHz at 1.15 volt, and testing I did was Prime95. The hottest core was 77 degrees Celsius, while average core temperature was 74 degrees Celsius and the coldest of the cores under load was 71 degrees Celsius. So we have a delta of 6 degrees Celsius between the coldest and the hottest core. So besides the fact that the chip is a little bit bent, so the corners are sitting a little lower than the center of the core, I also have the theory that removing the top layer should already help us in a thermal conductivity. Because typically, what you can see on this chip, the shiny layer here, this should be a diffusion barrier, typically silicon nitride. And silicon nitride has a worse thermal conductivity than silicon. So silicon typically has like 150 thermal conductivity and silicon nitride something depending on the exact type and the type how it's applied to the silicon surface. It's typically between 30 and 100 uh, thermal conductivity. So just removing, it's a very thin layer, I know that, but just removing the diffusion barrier could already help. But then removing the diffusion barrier could potentially also cause trouble. So obviously I ask you not to repeat this at home because if you remove the diffusion barrier, it could be that some atoms of your liquid metal compound, for example, indium, gallium, whatever, some of those atoms could diffuse inside your silicon and could potentially damage your CPU over time. Even though if this might work, it could be that after, I don't know, one month, two months, something, it could affect your CPU, could maybe damage your CPU permanently. Luckily, I still have all my gear from the die shot videos and basically we're doing the same thing here as in the die shot videos, just we have to be a little bit more careful because we want the CPU to still work after grinding down the chip. So we're using a 40 micrometer aluminum oxide um, polishing film, which is from 3M and basically just using this to grind down the center of the chip and it takes quite a lot of time. So in total, I think I spent like two or three hours grinding down this chip and just after like 10 or 15 minutes, you can already see that we're removing some of the material from the center. You can clearly, clearly see that the center is a lot higher than the corners. So as I said before, I ended up grinding like two or three hours on this chip. I always kept checking the chip itself if it has any kind of cracks or bigger scratches. Um, I was really, really careful. Also always only applied pressure in the middle, not too much pressure and always checked what the effect is. So I measured in between always um, the height difference, how much we actually removed from the silicon. Once I saw that the complete diffusion barrier was removed, so the whole surface looked even and it looked like all the shiny material was gone, I changed from the 40 micrometer aluminum oxide polishing film to a nine micrometer diamond lapping film to just remove the last bits of the CPU. So let's go over and check measurements after grinding down the chip. So as I said before, I measured before and after. Now you can see the after measurements and you can see the total height in the middle is now 3.636 millimeters, which is uh, minus 78 micrometers and you can also see in the corners it's a little bit less. We have roughly the same dimensions everywhere, so 3.637 uh, on one corner, uh, 641 on the other corner, 640 on the other one. So we have roughly removed between 30 and 80 micrometers of silicon on this chip, which is considering the total die height of around 0.78 millimeters of this chip, really not much. So we're talking about something like six, seven, eight percent of silicon which we removed, which is actually not that much. 
So after measuring everything, after grinding down, I used uh, Cleaner 601, which is the cleaner I always use for cleaning anything like liquid metal and stuff. So I can recommend this. I'm not sure where I bought this, cannot really remember, but it should be a very common cleaner. Probably you can even find it on Amazon. So uh, if you're looking for something to remove residues, especially liquid metal residues, I can absolutely recommend this cleaner. So uh, as I said before, so I started cleaning the CPU and I reapplied liquid metal on the chip and also on the heat spreader. And then I put the CPU back in the socket and checked if the CPU was still alive and CPU was still working. A lot of you might think like, damn cringe, what is he doing to his CPU? And uh, he's using water on the CPU because it's a wet polishing film. But don't be afraid, you can put your CPU under tap water and anything. It doesn't hurt the CPU as long as you dry it properly and clean it properly after, it's really not bad for your CPU. So I performed the same kind of testing again. CPU was clocked again to 4.2 gigahertz on all cores. Did again the same Prime95 testing for one hour. So let's check the results. You can see the hottest core is now 75 degrees Celsius, which is minus two degrees Celsius. And the average core temperature was 69.25 degrees Celsius, which is almost five degrees less. And the coldest core was now 66 degrees Celsius, which is an improvement of five degrees Celsius. So we have a slight improvement in temperature, which is not that impressive. I would say like four to five degrees Celsius average is not really impressive, especially considering the amount of effort, the risk that's involved. And we really don't know what's going to happen to the CPU after like two, three, four or five months, especially leaving liquid metal on there. As I said before, we removed the diffusion barrier. So it's very likely that some of the atoms from the liquid metal might diffuse into the CPU somehow and damage the CPU over time. So it helps, but I would absolutely not recommend it. In the next step, I will actually try to remove a lot more of the silicon chip. So as I said before, total die height is 0.78 millimeters and we should be able to remove half of it. The CPU should still work because if you know it from my 8700K SEM video, if you don't know it, check it out. It should be really interesting. So the actual circuit of the CPU is sitting on the back of the CPU. So sitting off the, on the PCB side and what we can see here that's actually the back of the CPU. So we can remove a lot of the material here without damaging the actual circuit on the CPU. So that would be the next thing I'm going to try. Maybe it helps because in theory, thermal conductivity of the silicon is good, but for example, it's not as good as copper, which we use um, as material for a cooler, for example. So if we have a thinner um, material on the silicon side, it should help. The, to improve the thermal conductivity of the whole system. So that's what I'm going to try maybe like after Computex in three or four weeks. As I said before, check out my Instagram account. Uh, don't miss the content from Computex. I hope you enjoyed this video and take care. See you soon.